Hey, movie goers and... Pikachu! Don't you think you've had enough? Pikachu! Okay, okay, jeez. He's so cranky when he's on a caffeine withdrawal. Hey, movie goers, it's me, Shinobi Nando, and welcome to a review of Detective Pikachu. Detective Pikachu takes place in Rhyme City and follows Tim Goodman, searching for his father alongside a Pikachu that can mysteriously talk to him. Not only talk, but is apparently a world-class detective? Set in the video game world of the Pokemon themselves, this is the first ever live action CGI adaptation of Pokemon based on the 3DS game of the same name. Now, first thing I want to talk about in this film is it's absolutely brilliant in this world building. Guys, it's phenomenal. It's like they took the images or the anime and just slapped like, I don't know, a, a realistic filter on them. The Pokemon look fantastic. They kind of blend between realistic and tribute or, or staying true to, to their character design. Like we don't. It's not like the Sonic the Hedgehog where they try to make it kind of like anthropomorphic or anything like that or try to like take a lizard and, and give it, you know, Trico's powers or a mouse, like Pikachu's not a mouse size, as you can see in the trailers. And this works really, really well. Honest to Arceus, this could have gone really, really poorly. The CGI in this movie gives Marvel a run for its money, man. Like, honestly, Pikachu looks phenomenal. Look at some of this animation. Look at him move his, his mouth, his eyes, his fur. It gets matted, it gets wet, it's so good. They've gone for more of a, I wouldn't say realistic, but believable approach with the world. It's not so much like we're in the anime world where everything revolves around Pokemon. It feels like that it's the real world, but Pokemon exist. People have cars, there's normal jobs, Tim's an insurance salesman at the beginning of, of the film. And, and it's established that people either become trainers or just live normal mundane lives with like Pokemon as partners or helpers or pets. One creepy thing we do see is the fact that there's a farm and there's no other animals in the world. It's just Pokemon. So uh, is everyone vegan? Is, this, is that what's happening here or, or like, I've seen sushi restaurant signs in Rhyme City. I'm, I'm getting a bit concerned here. Pokemon Company, what's going on? Do you want to tell us a harsh truth? That brings us to Rhyme City. We jump into this movie straight away. Pokemon's over 20 years old. We don't need an explanation. Pikachu's one of the most recognizable characters in the world. So we don't get this ham-fisted explanation of what Pokemon is and what the Pokemon world is. It's more about Rhyme City. Very subtly, I wouldn't say shoehorn. That's a poor choice of words. They subtly weave in a bit of explanation of the Pokemon world just to kind of help those parents maybe that came along don't really understand it. But Rhyme City is a city where Pokemon and people live together after their founder. He discovered he was terminally ill, so he went out to the world, he discovered Pokemon. He felt like rather than capture them and battle them, we should be partners with them. We should be equal partners. So Rhyme City has no trainers, no Pokemon battles, Everyone seems to have one Pokemon that they partner with that either helps them in their day-to-day -day life, just as a companion as you would with a pet in real life, or as I said before, just, just help them with their job. And, and it's not like the anime where they pair up Pokemon that would be logical. It's whatever, like they, they, they make this quite clear. It's the Pokemon has to choose you, you have to choose them. If you're not gonna go out and catch them, it's more of a, like a bonding thing. Like some things kind of match up, like uh, the crossing guard is a Machoke. You've you, you seen it in the trailers, he's blocking traffic. Um, police have, uh, have Growlithe or Charmander. Firefighters have Squirtle. Obviously that's gonna be, make a bit more sense, but other things like a reporter has a Psyduck. So what, what guy that owns the motel has a Trico. What's that help him with? Good with paper? But it makes it more believable. If you weren't a trainer and you, you just went out and you probably just catch or, or partner up with the first Pokemon that you found cute or you're not doing it because of stats or battling like you would in real life you don't go to a dog kennel and go like oh that that one you there he looks like a fighter you, you get the one that you kind of you know you match eyes oh he's cute let's take him same thing with the Pokemon in terms of the story like not everyone would be like Ash or Red and kind of make it to the top and become this famous Pokemon trainer so there's, it seems to be like a lot of people tried and they just kind of have still like the, like adults have like base level Pokemon, you know what I mean? Like adults have like a, a little Rattatat or something like that. And then you have the other side where like the buildings are all modern. It looks like it could be, I personally felt like it was weirdly Manchester from, from the UK. Just certain shots, maybe it was shot in Manchester or Liverpool, but you could definitely tell like a New York vibe as well, skyscrapers, everything like that. They even had cars, like real world cars. That's obviously product placement to get funding for the film, but you had like Audis and 
Lexuses and Rolls Royce and things like that. So again, it's it's more the believable rather than super realistic. It's it's all world with Pokemon in it replacing animals. That's that's it really. And the story itself is really well done. If you're worried that this was going to be very childish, I would liken this to. Do you not know, like the kids' films or shows like Avatar: The Last Airbender? or Young Justice, or the old Justice League TV shows from DC, where it's obviously meant for kids, but had a, like a mature undertone, where like older fans really jumped on board. It's really that. In fact, we went with a young person, and uh, a lot of the story beats, maybe, maybe at his age, was a bit too much. But obviously, you know, Pokemon, excitement, <laughs> he loved it anyways. Story as, as well is not overly predictable, which is good again, for, for especially for a kid's film. I have to say it is one of the better plots in a video game movie, let alone a kid's film. Like, honest to Arceus, there's, there's twists in it that maybe most of you won't see coming, but there's foreshadowing. The villain himself isn't like two-dimensional. He has a rhyme and his reason. Even his motivation is not like, just like, meh, 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 meh. I'm going to rule the world with the most powerful Pokemon. I'm going to steal them. You know, he's not Giovanni or anything like that. Speaking of Giovanni and, and things like that, apparently this seems to take place in the actual canonical Pokemon world. They, they mentioned that events happened 20 years ago from the games, and we know from Ultra Sun and Moon that, that they take place 20 years after Red and Blue. So that's pretty cool, right? Now, while Pokemon battles are illegal in Rhyme City, we do get some battles, don't worry, but th th that isn't the crux or the focus of this film. It's not about the trainers battling, becoming the very best. This is a... It is a detective story. It's a it's a it's a murder mystery almost, like a whodunit. So that's pretty cool to see in the Pokemon world as well. Just again, because it fleshes it out more. We see it from a mundane, normal person's perspective rather than from always the the trainer kind of. I've got to get my next gym badge. Pikachu is really really good in this. He's essentially PG Deadpool though. Like I'm not gonna lie, it's Ryan Reynolds, the sass. The jokes he comes up with, they, they're like, ooh, this is getting a bit PG. The way Pikachu acts and his facial expressions and mannerisms perfectly capture that kind of Ryan Reynolds humor. Pikachu! Yes, yes, you were great in it too. Pika. Yes, I've mentioned, Pika, Pika. I know it was an all Ryan Reynolds performance. All right, calm down. Jeez, he's such a diva. So guys, my verdict for this film is five ninja stars out of five. This is phenomenal. Go see it in the cinema. This is one of the best movies I've seen this year, right? I'd rate it higher than Shazam. Honestly, this is the best video game movie we've ever gotten. Go see it in the cinema. Take your kids, take your friends. If you're ever a Pokemon fan, casual or hardcore, go for it. You will not be disappointed. Honestly, I, I, I cannot praise this film enough. This is not just a great video game movie. This is just a great movie overall. So don't forget to give the video a like. Pick a beat. Pick a I was just getting, I was, as he said, subscribe. Let me know what you think of this kind of the live action Pokemon. Have you seen it? Is this the greatest video game movie we've ever gotten? Let me know in the comments down below and I'll see you in the next. I swear to Arceus, if you interrupt me one more time, you're going back in the Pokeball.